I've worked with Eamon many times before. I've worked with Ruth many times before. You wouldn't find a racist bone in their bodies. He's one of the most kind, humble, and I think actually talented broadcasters we have. And if Dr Zoe Williams says that she found the comment to be close to the knuckle, well, then I think that it's reasonable that, that at least a conversation could be had. But all of these people, there have been articles written about it, about how outrageous it was, how rude it was, about how racist it was. And I just want to know from you whether we're collectively losing our minds or whether it's right that people are so outraged by this or whether, once again, this is an example of where we're confusing intent with offence. Well, let's now talk live to Rebecca Daniel, co-founder of The Coaching Catalysts, who joins me live on Talk Radio. Uh, afternoon to you, Rebecca. Hello, good afternoon. What, what is, what's The Coaching Catalyst? So anyone who doesn't know what it is can tell me. Yeah, so I am a co-founder along with Sarah Bramall, and we're both ex-teachers, and we work with female professionals and female entrepreneurs to help them to live their absolute best life and prioritise their well-being and their mindset so that they can truly be fulfilled. Why is what Eamon Holmes said yesterday being seen as racist? I think it's been seen as racist because we've been having these conversations around Black Lives Matter. We've been having the conversations about what is considered to be racist and non-racist, anti-racist. I think it's racist in the sense that um, when we're talking about hair, it's quite a personal and sensitive subject for a woman of colour, especially for a black woman. And I think that the conversation that was had and the comment that was had, he said it in humour. And, you know, I've, I've worked it with Eamon previously before. Um, and he said it with humour, but I think it's a comment that we wouldn't have said if it was a white woman. And the comments probably wouldn't have been made otherwise. And, you know, he said it was towards his friend and it was something that was joking. But I think that these mini kind of microaggressions are things that we're noticing and recognising more and more now. And I think it is insensitive and it is offensive. But actually, I don't know if Eamon meant it to be like that. Well, isn't that the entire crux here? Well, firstly, I think he would have said it if it was a white woman I think my hair's quite short at the moment I think he might have said it to me if we were doing a, a broadcast together where my hair gets long and, 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 and very very curly because he was making a joke about curly hair not necessarily about race but didn't you just hit the nail on the head that there was no intent from Eamon to be in any way shape or form racist and are we really so sensitive now that if someone has what are clearly good intentions, a joke between two friends who clearly know each other, we're now going to immediately jump on that and say that he's got some sort of ill intent or worse, racist intentions. Mm, and, I, and I can't actually say that he didn't intend for it to be that way or not. You know, I, I can't make well, that. So, you, so with respect, but, you think he was on television deliberately trying to be racist? I'm not deliberately trying <laughs> be racist but I'm you know I don't know him that well enough but what I do know is that as a society we need to be more mindful of the words that we're using and who we're directing them to because black women and their hair it's, it's a big thing it's a thing because we are judged based on the way we look the way we are and we're judged on our appearances and we can be sensitive towards that and that's okay because we know that we have been judged for the way that we look and for the way that we but are. That doesn't but... mean that every single time someone makes a comment about your hair, you're being judged. And I don't think that you can say on the one hand that, that you don't know his intent, which you don't, neither do yeah. I, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't to be racist. And I'm pretty sure that apologising afterwards for any offence he would have caused confirms he wasn't being racist. But then secondly, make an assumption that making a comment about a black woman's hair is immediately racist. Hmm. I think it's just about educating people and making people really aware of the comments that they say and who they say it towards and how. And Eamon is in a position of power, a position of trust, being someone that you know we love so much on the screens, on our media. So by making comments like that, 
if a young child heard that, for example, being, you know, attributed to an animal and then going beyond that and saying that you would like to pet them. We're not animals. You know, we, we don't want to be petted. And I've had those comments before when I was younger in my 20s and I had braids and I would walk in. I was a teacher. I would walk in and the kids wouldn't understand. You know, they would think that I was a Rastafarian or they'd think that I, you know, smoked marijuana, for example, because those were the comments. That but were that, at- in, and respectfully, that's in a classroom when you're a child around other children. Again, you know, when I was in school, I was mercilessly taking the mickey off because of, of my weight. Whereas if someone did it now in a really lovely, jokey, unintentionally un- unkind way unintentionally to be unkind I wouldn't have a problem with it at all and and do you really want a society where actually if we're looking for a society of equality which I think is really important that that we're going to say right well a joke I'd make to a white person I'm not going to make to a black person because isn't that an inequality in itself, that we have to then, I'm going to have to tiptoe around my black friends about the jokes I make because they're, they're, they're so sensitive they can't take it, but I'll make the joke to the white person. That's not what you want, surely. What I would love, and, you know, I know Sarah would agree with this if she was here, is we would love to educate people to the power of their words. We don't know people's backgrounds. We don't know what people have been subjected to. And if we do not start with the young people, and this is why I brought up that experience in the classroom, because they would get these comments from somewhere, and most likely they get them from the older members that they're surrounded by. So if we start now by being mindful of the words that we're using and also teach people about why they can be offensive to certain people, if that comment was directed to me, yes, I would be offensive, offended by it. And the reason why is because of my exposure and you know the prejudice that was surrounding me when I was looking but for... But you a... can't assume everyone has been subjected to prejudice or that everyone should assume you've been subjected to prejudice. With Respectfully, again, I think that's... That's actually, I don't want to have a view of every single person who's non-white to think, oh, there that you must have been subjected to prejudice. So therefore, I'm going to have to tiptoe my behaviour around you because that must have been your experience. Again, isn't that a little bit patronising towards people who are non-white? Again, I'm, I'm gay, so I know about, perhaps it's a different ted- kettle of fish and I get it, but I know about the sensitivities of being a minority and having faced prejudice around it but I then but but I if someone I know makes a, a well-intended joke about my sexuality I wouldn't expect them to not do that out of love or with with good intentions because mm-hmm. I might have had someone be homophobic to me in the past yeah I, I just think we need to be really careful I think for me it's quite tiring it's quite exhausting to try and have to keep explaining you know, why this is offensive over and over again. But being compared to an animal, I don't think anyone should be compared to an animal and that, you know, whether whether you're white, whether you're black, you know, when we're, we're not animals, we're humans. And I think that having those comments made is dehumanising. But then, I- then isn't that a sense of humour? I mean, look, I'm sorry I keep having to make you explain it. And I don't mean to be, you know, d- d- deliberately controversial. I just really worry that we're getting to a rather humourless place in society where where absolutely if he was was saying with someone you know that he didn't know at all never broadcasted with before had no idea or or any kind of friendship with the before and said in a negative way you know god your hair's looking absolutely terrible you look an animal i would understand you saying well that's near the knuckle but 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 that's not this and i just worry that we're ending up in this awful place where we're seeing ill intention an offence in everything. And whilst we're doing that, we're actually missing the real ill intention and offence that's over there. There is, there's humour and then there's the microaggressions that come with that. And I think that we need to be really clear on the boundaries between that. And I think for Dr Zoe as well, she laughed after that comment, but I said a really awkward laugh. And same with Ruth, you know, Ruth made, you know, made a remark after um, Eamon had said that. And then Dr Zoe said, don't touch my hair. She was laughing when she said it, don't touch my hair. You know, I, the way... Comfortable, uncomfortable comments. I mean, if you, if you had a pound for every time Ruth 
uh, laughed uncomfortably next to Eamon. In fairness, we'd both be able to retire, and so I'm not sure we can take that as a as a full uh, admission of, of Eamon being being inappropriate. But again, Doctor Zoe laughed. She laughed when she said, "Don't touch my hair," because he said he'd like to 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 pet it. And I just, I'm 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 sorry. I just I I understand that. There are some things that are said that have bad intentions, have racist intentions, have unkind intentions, or are meant horribly negatively. I just feel like people are getting really, really angry on her behalf when she laughed and has not said a word about it since. And I do think that laughter was an uncomfortable laugh. I do really think that. But I think the most important thing here is that Eamon has publicly apologised. And, you know, I appreciate that. And Dr Zoe hasn't come out yet. And because I'm... a Twitter bob went wow. after him. Yeah. But that just highlights, though, doesn't it? If That just highlights the extremity of the comment that he made. That what he about did... his mental health? What about the way in which he's now being completely vilified by people for, for, for this. Like, I don't think that's particularly kind either. Mm, but I think he'll learn from these comments. You know, you don't, if you don't make mistakes, you don't learn. And I think that he will also learn from that comment. I think Dr. Zoe will learn, you know, whether she found it humorous, whether she was offended by it and how best to approach that. And we will also learn as a public as well how we can, you know, deal with comments like that, whether we consider it to be racist, non-racist, whatever it may be. But I think that all of this is a learning experience. But, yeah, I think I really stand from the point where we don't, you know, compare people to animals. We don't say that we are going to pet people. And we should just be really mindful of the comments and the statements that we make towards people. All right. Well, I think you've got that. I respectfully disagree in every instance that that is the case. But I really appreciate the way that you've put your uh, point across. And I hope you feel you've managed to do so. Rebecca Daniel, co-founder of The Coaching Catalysts here on Talk Radio. So is there a part of this that I don't understand? I I'm I'm I understand if there is really ill intent or if something is said in a really really unkind way. Eamon is not those things, and I don't just say that because I work with him a little bit or because he's been incredibly supportive of me. I say it because it's obvious. Zero three double four four double nine one thousand is the number to call. Have we just become so oversensitive that we're confusing intent? with outcome we we're in confusing intent with immediate offense we we're confusing the subject of a joke with the offense around it and we're just becoming this sort of humorless society of the constantly offended zero three double four four double nine one thousand is the number to call right here on talk radio <laughs> 